Hello and welcome to the session in which we would look at the third income taxes, whether that's a deferred income tax asset or a deferred income tax liability or a deferred income tax expense. This topic is covered on the CPA exam as well as intermediate accounting. This topic gives students many issues because you have to understand not only financial accounting, you have to understand tax accounting as well to understand the fair tax asset as well as well as the fair tax liability you have to understand the differences between the IRS code as well as gap so this is one of the complication that this topic give students beside many other complication but that's the first one so you need to have knowledge from your income tax course and you need to apply it in, in your intermediate accounting course so students oftentimes they don't make this connection the good news is farhatlectures.com can help you if i'm known for anything i'm known for my deferred income tax asset and liability lessons so if you are an intermediate accounting students or a cpa candidate i strongly suggest you take a look at my website farhatlectures.com I can help you understand the third tax asset and the third tax liability from zero. I don't assume any prior knowledge in contrast to your CPA review course. As a result, I can help you add 10 to 15 points to your CPA exam score. My courses are designed to mirror image your CPA review course. So they are set up the same way. So it's very easy for you to find me as a backup or as an alternative explanation because everything is organized just like your CPA review course. Your risk to try me is $29 a month. I don't replace your CPA review course. That's your risk. Your potential gain is passing the exam. If not for anything, check out my website to find out how well your university doing or not doing on the CPA exam. I do have resources for other colleges for other course colleges as well in CPA sections. Please connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. And on LinkedIn, you will see recommendation from other students that took my course and succeed on the exam. Like this recording, share it on YouTube, connect with me on Instagram and Facebook. So let's take a look at this question. Adam Company has a year one deferred tax asset on its books of 1900, which is not of valuation allowance of 500. So simply put in your mind or on that piece of paper or on the board on the exam day, you have a deferred tax asset. You have 1900. You have an allowance account for that 1900 and it is 500. This is what you are giving in year one. In year two, the company increased the valuation allowance by 300. Okay, that's good. We're going to increase the valuation account. This is year two by 300. Therefore, we're up to 800. If the tax rate in year one was 40%, and in year two and future years at 35%, the impact of the changes on year two will be what? A, a decrease of 300 in income tax expense, an increase of 300 on income tax expense, an increase of 600 in income tax expense, a decrease of 600 on income tax expense. So notice what they're asking us is, what will that change? How will that change affect income tax expense? So notice the question is basically, first, well, you have to know whether it's an increase or a decrease. So if you have a basic understanding, you should be able to eliminate two choices, whether it's an increase or a decrease. So you have to find out what is, what's that going to happen? Is it going to increase or decrease the third tax asset? Now, we're going to know, we're going to know shortly or immediately whether it's going to increase or decrease income tax expense. Okay, but it has to do with income tax expense. How does DTA affect income tax expense? So this is what you need to know. I need to know if my deferred tax asset increased. Okay, if this result increased, it means I have to reduce. If I debit deferred tax asset, I have to reduce. I will decrease income tax expense. Now, it was is it three hundred or six hundred? I don't know. If the third taxed asset, it's going to go down. If the third tax asset goes down, well, I'm going to increase income tax expense. Whether it's, it's the answer will be either B or C. So immediately, once I know it's going to be an increase or a decrease, remember, because look, if I debited this account, I'm going to have to credit income tax expense. If I credited this account, 
I'm going to debit income tax expense. So I need to, I, I know I should know this, this relationship immediately. So simply put, if DTA goes up, the expense will go down because I'm going to have to debit this. Therefore, I'm going to have to credit this. If DTA goes down, the expense will go up because this is a credit and the expense is a debit. Okay, so this is the things that I explain in details when you go to farhatlectures.com, but this is what you need to, this is where you need to be as far as your mentally before starting this problem. Now, so how do I know, how do I know what happened here? Well, I do have enough information that's going to allow me to solve this problem. I know from year one, the gross, uh, not the gross, net deferred tax asset is 1900 if I take it and add to it the valuation allowance, I know the gross deferred tax asset was 2,400. Now, how do I have deferred tax asset? I have a deferred tax asset because of a temporary difference. Remember, there's a temporary difference. You multiply it by a tax rate, you come up with a deferred tax asset. Now, what is that temporary difference? That temporary difference, I don't know how much it is in year one, but I know if I take that temporary difference, which is I called it X, I multiply it by 0.4, that gave me 2,400. Now, if I solve for X, I will take 2,400. I'll divide that by 0.4. I know that the temporary difference was the TD, the temporary difference, not TP, TD, the temporary difference was 6,000. Simply put, I took 6,000. I said this was a temporary difference. I multiplied by 0.4. I got 2,400. Of this, I had 500 I will not use. Therefore, the 500 went into the allowance and the 1,900 went to the third tax asset. So this is what happened in year, in year one. Now I know my temporary difference. It's 6,000. Now in year two, I'm not giving any changes. All what I'm told is your tax rate changed. Well, well, if my tax rate change and I have, I have, all what I have is temporary difference of 6,000 and all what change is my tax rate. Well, it means I'm going to take the 6,000 now and multiply it because I have to adjust my deferred tax asset because my tax rate change. When, when your tax rate, future tax rate change, you have to recompute this times 0.35 because this is my new tax rate. Therefore, it's going to be 2100 so this is the gross amount and i know they already told me the valuation the valuation was an additional 300 therefore i'm going to take 2100 minus 800 minus 800 so let's let's do this 2100 minus 800 my net my net dta will be 1300 therefore DTA is 1300 okay let's see so I'm gonna have to do what I'm gonna have to credit this account 600 what did I tell you well immediately if that's the case if I'm gonna credit DTA because DTA went down well income tax expense it's gonna if I credit this I have to debit income tax expense so this is these two are out so income tax expense will go up by how much look 600 so the entry would be credit deferred taxed asset and debit income tax expense 600. So this is what the entry would be. You will credit deferred tax asset, you would reduce your deferred tax asset, and you will transfer it to income tax expense. So that's the answer, the answer is C. So notice, I told you from the beginning, once you know deferred tax asset, it's going to go down. And you should know this. Now, how would I know the deferred tax asset that's going to go down? Well, because my tax rate went down. My tax rate went down. It, I, I, I had savings when I initially had that temporary difference. When initially, so this is, I'm giving you back to, if you understand the concept, if initially I had a temporary difference and that temporary difference and that temporary difference led to a deferred taxed asset. Now, the higher the tax rate, the higher is my savings. If the tax rate goes down, my savings will go down. It means my interest expense will go up. So immediately, once I know my tax rate, if I have a basic understanding of this, once I know my tax rate went from 40 to 35, it means I have less savings. 
less savings mean more income tax expense. So immediately I can take out A and D and you will guess between B and C. And this is what I told you at the beginning. I'll go back and tell you that basic understanding would, would help you to eliminate two choices. Would help you to eliminate two choices. Then you are giving the $800. Then you will find the temporary difference times the new rate. The gross should be 2100 The valuation amount was given to you, 800 the DTA should be 1300 therefore we reduced it by 600 we reduced it by 600 we increase our income expense by 600 and I hope this is not I'm not confusing you but again this is what I'm going to invite you to do this topic is challenging I believe the CPA review course don't do a good job not because they don't do a good job because they're not good they don't do a good job because most likely you are not well prepared in college or if you were prepared in college you forgot all the basics and the cpa review course any of them will assume you have a basic understanding and sometimes you don't you did not do well in college this is where i come into place this is where i can bridge that gap between your education and your cpa review look one month of subscription give me a try you like it you keep it you don't like it you cancel are you willing to risk that for one month to find out if someone can help you pass the exam that's all what i'm asking you to do it's less than a dollar a day anyhow stay safe good luck